Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today the subject is top-down modeling and why you would use this versus bottom-up any other method. I prefer this. I think it's the most accurate way to build a model and ensure that everything stays in place. Your links aren't broken. Your adjustments can be made out of one file which follows itself downstream. Let me show you some other examples of top-down. This pedal, single file, bar, and the other pedal. They brought in to a assembly, but they're still made of separate parts. This flight case is controlled by one box, so you can adjust the height, width, and depth. Once you've done all the hard work, let me turn this off. That little box inside is what controls the size of this. So if you have a different item that's going to go in here and it's a different size, all you do is do a save as so you're not destroying the original file. Adjust that box to fit whatever you're putting in it, and that's it. Everything updates downstream. You don't have to rebuild it from scratch. And then the assembly that goes along with that, you can add your casters and your handles and your latches and your corners and it doesn't affect those at all so you will be able to adjust that other everything else will reposition itself accordingly so let's go ahead and build this and i'll show you exactly how we can adjust this after the fact let's go ahead and create a new sheet pedal part First thing you want to do is set your thickness. You don't want to come back and mess with that later. You may get confused. 063 is what we're using today, a little steel part. And we're going to do the drawing. You'll see this a little sluggish. It's only eyes because I have it set at higher res and not for performance. Here's the outline of the box. I'm going to make this construction line and let's do our parameters ahead of time so we can find them and control them. I'm going to call this back equals 1.5. Let's do the front. Equals 1. And depth equals 3.3. Not zooming very well. Okay, let's go ahead and finish that. And do a contour flange. We're going to pick this and we're going to do it from the center. And you'll see why in a second here. So this, we need a length. And that's going to be 11. Well, if I put the equal sign, that will help. There we go. Okay, that's our first part. Let's go ahead and do the side profile. And I'm going to go off this section right here. projection. Go ahead and pick these parts. It's okay to that. And I still need to close this, so I need a, an extra line. Here's the one thing I will mention. We're just modeling this. This is just an example, but if you were actually going to build this effectively, correctly, you would want to offset this a little bit. To compensate for tolerance as well as paint. Uh, there's a paint buildup on both parts if it's done that way before they're assembled. Uh, so you would need a little bit of room. You want it to be more of a slip fit and not a press fit for a, um, a whole host of reasons. Let's go ahead and finish that. And let's do a face. Make sure it's pointing in the right direction. You know, if you need to flip, it's one of these. Say okay to that. Okay, you see what happened here? 
it made it into a single part. Let's go back into that face. And this is what you have to do. And this is where it makes a difference. This is where top-down modeling actually is effective. This little plus sign beside this says new solid. You have to pick that. And when you say okay, now they're two separate parts. Let's go ahead and put a flange on the bottom of this. Um, normally I would type in length, but I think it's already in here. Yeah, length. And this is why we did the center. We're going to do length divided by two, which will make it midpoint of this. And that's exactly what we would need. So you still have your two parts. And now we're just going to mirror this. Mirror. You pick this. Mirror solid. You pick your solid, which is going to give you that entire part. Mirror plane. Go to origin. We're picking this particular plane. And saying, okay, now we actually have our two parts. We're not done with this yet. We want to do the flanges, and that's how it's going to be attached. So let's zoom in on this. We're going to do another flange. If you roll over to this, and it's hard to try to find that, if you just wait a second, it'll give you your list. So you can actually do a different edge, and that's the edge we want. Obviously, we do not need that. So for this lip, it's going to be 0.5. We're going to flip the direction and hit the plus sign so we can stay within the command. So we're going to do the back. It's going to do the same thing. Go to edge. Then we're going to accept. So it has the corner. So we have our bent part and that's finished. Let's go ahead and clean up the corners real quick. Or round corners. For this we want 0.126. Select our parts. Say okay to that. So now we have a nice clean box. Let's go ahead and add the holes. Select the face so we're in the right direction. Um, I'm going to project, and for some people, they're going to say, I wouldn't do it this way, but this is my preferred method. Uh, if you have a different way or you have something else, um, go have had it. But this is how I usually do my holes. I don't really care for arrays. I've seen them break way too many times. And if somebody else has actually created them, sometimes it get confusing. So this takes a little longer but then I know exactly how I can adjust this and it's not causing me problems. I do that because if you draw a line and you don't have a point already, um, you can't really see it, it blends to the next one, so I do it this way. Okay, let's add our other points. Because there are eight holes in the top of this. Once I get that done, I am going to select each one of these. Because the spacing is equal, so I'm going to make these all the same. And now I'm just going to control it from one. The spacing in between is three. The LED at the top is 0.75. The bottom is one inch. So that is set. For me, I say OK. I will select the entire thing and turn everything into construction lines. Oh, got one thing that's off. Let's go back into that sketch. I knew I missed that. There we go. Let's go ahead and put our holes in. Now I don't need every one of these because they're two different sizes, so I'm going to deselect these to start with. And 
this is 0 0.41 for the latches. You go into the hole, right click, share sketch, and we're back into the same thing. I'm going to add the other ones. These are pressing LEDs, so it's 0 0.21, I believe. That'll work. It's just a sample. Go ahead and turn off the visibility of that and the box. So far is almost done. We're going to add some holes in the front. Do this a little differently. I'm going to draw my line because it's three holes off screen because when you start rolling over you'll see sometimes you can grab other things and it's kind of annoying depending on how complex the inside of this is. So I do it off screen so I don't have to mess with it later. This has three mount points. Say okay to that. Sorry about that. Everything's always trying to update. Doing this from the center. These are construction. Slide this into place. Now I want this to grow regardless what size is because I always want this hole to be to that corner. And this is where you pre-plan on how you're doing it. 375 for this. Height is 25. So I don't have, now I'm done, I don't have to go back and mess with this. Um, it will adjust accordingly. So for this, let's put a holes in this. And I'm going to do, see if I can find this. So I'm going to stumble around a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to use number three on that countersink. Let's say OK. Um, now for the, the flange that's in here, which will be threaded, I'm going to pick on that face. Project these. Just out of habit, I turn these into construction. And then I add my points so it can be, the uh, whole command can easily find those. Say okay to that. Let's do the whole command. This time we want to use a threaded. Where are we here? Threaded. It is not. It's finding those. That may not be exactly right diameter but I'm this is just an example I don't really care right now so we have this the box is done just save that let's just call it kind of TDM top-down modeling so you have your adjustable part from one file you have your holes and the reason is this cannot break since this is associated and projected off of this if you move this in any way in the um, part file or into the drawing, it will go with it. It will change regardless. You don't have to try to realign something in somebody else's single part, brought it in, try to make it associative. It can break. I prefer it this way. So one thing that you want to do for this, you want to name your parts. It's just good practice. It's easier to find things. Uh, down the line. If you have a manufacturing uh, company you work for that has uh, con already controlled numbers, that's a different thing. Uh, that will pop up the way that they have it uh, constructed. But for me, I'm going into uh, solid bodies. I have this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go here. And for this, I'm just going to say uh, TDM top okay to that pick the bottom right click go to properties same thing tdm bottom uh, you can do the update which will give all the arrest 
center of gravity, mass, area, volume. I'm not going to worry about that today. But that does get affected in the individual parts. So here's where the rubber hits the road. You have this file. You go up to, you'll see you're in sheet metal. Come out to the right. You'll see make components. This will come up. This is the name of what the assembly is going to be. Here's your path where it's going to go. And if you just window the two parts, I just name those. There's the individual. So if I do next, some, uh, like I said, manufacturer, a company that I worked with uh, prior, they have their own numbering, automatic numbering thing. This is where you would do whatever adjustments if needed be. I'm just gonna accept this and say, okay. This will give a second. It created this. This is an assembly. So if I go to this individual part, open it up, it already created the individual parts for me. This is done. Here you can do your flat pattern. Let's go back. And this is what's the nice part. All these parts, TDM, let's do the bottom too while we're at it. Um, there we go. Okay, so now this is fixed. All I do is go back to the original IPT file and say, let's see, the original shape. I can adjust it here, or rather than go in and find anything in the history tree, we can just go to parameters. Since we re, we did this at the beginning, we have the names, back, front, depth, length. So I can change this to two It updated it. I go to the assembly. You have to do the update here, which will say local update. You pick that. That's it. It adjusts. You go to the top. It's already done because it's associated. Same thing here. So if I go back, add the parameter, uh, what I 1.5. It's back and say, I want to do a length of 15. And say, okay to that, go to your assembly, do the update. It's adjusted, go to your subparts. It's already adjusted. And this is the beauty of top down modeling. So here's the thing. If you did this design and they say, well, we want to add a couple more holes. That's easy enough to do. You wouldn't have to rebuild this in any way or have this part not match this part. So regardless of how you're adjusting this, these parts would go. Now, if I did, I went from the uh, center of this line between these and I made it three inches. If I did my parameters based off this edge to here, these holes would move along with it. You're doing minimal amount of work after the fact and you're in one single file rather than have a bunch of parts individually and try to assemble and hope they fit properly. This cannot break if you're creating it properly. That's all there is to it. That's top-down modeling. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, just email me. You'll see uh, the link in the, in the video. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.